Welcome to this Cremona Revival video. I'm David Baird, violin maker and researcher. We're going to look at dividers and straight edge and the circle geometries you can make from that and how these are used in instrument making. Cremona Revival. Can we do as they did? From their traditions and tools, each build unique? Can we read and use the geometry behind those great Italian instruments? Yes. Here we have tools of the craftsman, the square and dividers, arranged in a Masonic symbol. By 1776, these things represented the possibility of power independent of church or royal authority. But their origins are simply craftsman's tools. We're going to look not at this version, but at dividers in the straight edge and the geometries involved and how they were used in instrument making. Here we have Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. As artistic a portrayal of, of a human being as possible. And few of us think of this as a testimony to how significant the rule and the compass were to the Renaissance arts and to later crafts. But that's exactly what this Vitruvian man is. Why is it called Vitruvian? Uh, in reference to the Roman architect Vitruvius. And what he did is he described the human body in terms of simple ratios and proportions. And that's what da Vinci is exploring here. He's exploring Vitruvian's rules for the human body proportions that are expressed in simple, simple relationships like one to four or one part out of this or three parts out of that. That's what he's looking at. And those are the things that uh, the dividers give us. And he's also using straight lines. He's putting a square around the figure to observe the equality of the height versus the breadth of the arm. And that's what the ruler gives us. And this is, this is high tech of the Renaissance era. And we can think of Leonardo's life is just before the emergence of the violin in Cremona. So the things that are important in Leonardo's times are the ground out of which the, the violin making arises. Now let's look a little closer at what Leonardo is exploring here. If we check, we can see there are little lines running across the height of this figure, dividing it in four parts, four equal parts. And then below the square, along the bottom, there's a line. The line is the full width of the square, the height of the man. And it is also divided into four parts, or actually one at each end and two parts in the middle. And then at the ends there, each part is further divided in six pieces. And the, the smallest six at each end is further divided in another four pieces. Da Vinci has given himself a, a, an easy way to divide the length of the body into any division he wants down to 196, the whole length. Today, we don't much associate great artistic genius with something mundane like geometry, nor do we think of a straight edge or dividers as leading technology. But that's today's perspective. In the Renaissance, in the time of Leonardo, and the time when the violins emerged, these things were leading edge, and recovering knowledge from the ancient world was the high point of the intellectual day. Here we have a 1509 fresco from Rome, and a patron has been depicted here as Euclid, working geometry with, of course, dividers. In the time of the great violin making, the artist, the engineer, the craftsman, these things were not as separated. And we're going to look at the geometry and the use of dividers and straight edge, uh, and how these things were powerful in the old arts. We'll only need a very small amount of actual geometry our concern is drawing curves and working proportions. Uh, and there are really very few principles involved. We're interested, first of all, in sweeping arcs. And every one of these arcs is a portion of a circle that has a center and a radius. And the arc has a curvature. The larger the radius, the less that is. Our first interest here is how do we join lines and arcs smoothly? The principle for joining a line smoothly to an arc 
is simply uh, to make it at right angles to the point where it joins the circle. And that right angles, that's sort of a key principle. So we can also then join an arc to a line the same way. We draw a line at right angles, we pick a center anywhere we like for the curvature, and then we join there. And that's the basic, the most basic thing. We can also join arcs smoothly. And the key here is actually the right angles, but the kind of hiding. And the way we do this is as long as our points are in a line, we're good. We're going to see that here. Here we're going to just draw a very free curve. We're starting however we want. We want a, a flat arc to start with, so a big radius. We draw a line through our joining point and our center, and then we pick a new center anywhere on that line, and the, the being on that line is what makes the join smooth. We're going to continue. Once again, we mark where we want to join. We make a line through the center, and this is our reference. And here we're going to join with a line, so we use a square and we make it square from that point, and that assures a smooth join. Once again, we pick where we're going to join. We draw a line square to that point, and if we pick a center anywhere along here, we'll get a smooth joining arc. We want a nice tight little turn so we can get out of the edge of the paper here. So we pick a short radius, and we sweep an arc just as far as we want. So even though this is geometry, we can approach it, on a practical level, we can approach it quite freely. Uh, once again, we pick a point where we're going to join, and we draw a line to the center of that last arc. Through the new joining point, we pick a center anywhere we like for our new arc, and off we go. It's that easy. And again and again and again. In this way, you can make very complicated shapes. Now, here we aren't really worrying about proportion but the classical Italians generally concern themselves not only with the geometry, but also the proportions of the parts. And so they would usually actually work these things by making choices of sizes in terms of proportions also. Continuing a curve with double the radius, or double or flatter curvature, is very simple. You just make the center on the edge of the circle, and that gives you a, a flatter curvature with double the radius. To do half, you make the center of the new arc midway between the edge and the center. And it's that simple. And we begin to introduce proportions into our curves. Just to note, we use the words compass and divider pretty much interchangeably. And we might use the same tool for both jobs. If we use a tool to walk off equal divisions, then that's a divider. Uh, or if we specialize a tool for that purpose. And likewise, if we sweep out arcs or specialize a tool for that, that's a compass. So. The main point of dividers is to be able to take a fixed length like we have here and divide it into a given number of parts. Here I'm trying to divide it into fifths. My first guess was too much. I reduce the error by as my estimate of a fifth. I try again. You keep repeating that until you can walk cleanly from end to end of the line. And then you have the fifths and you can mark them in. So this is how the dividers divide a line. And that's a primary purpose of them. Now let's look at some other functions. I can set the divider to some sort of unit, and then I can walk off ratios. So here I'm walking off six units along this line, and then five units up, and then this is the basis for me drawing a rectangle proportioned as five by six. Now here I'm marking a single unit on the vertical right there, and then I'm walking off five units. This will enable me to make fists of that original unit by drawing a triangle. I draw the triangle, and now any combination of legs there will be in a 1 to 5 ratio. And so if I do them on the markings here, I have 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, and 4 fifths of the original unit. So that's a primary thing. Cremona body to length ratios, for instance. We start off with two squares, a 2 to 1 ratio, and then we reduce this by one part. So here we're walking off a fifth. We're going to reduce that by one fifth. So instead of a 1 to 2 body ratio, we produce by a fifth and we get 5 to 9. Similarly, we can reduce by a fourth, a third, or a half, and we get the other ratios traditional to Cremona violin and instrument making. So now let's look at working a 
a shape in wood, actually in wood. We're going to do a shape, a little bit smaller scale, but the basic shape of the bottom curve of a violin. And we're going to use cutting tools here. Um, and we're going to cut a, an initial reference line. Now, this line we're going to then divide into three parts for this example. Uh, and that will be the basis of our shape. We'll use the idea of overlapping circles. I'm not going to show the whole circles, just the arcs. But this kind of pattern is called a vesica. And there we're going to cut that part there. So if we continued that circle and both of these circles, they would overlap in a pattern called vesica pisces because the circles are equal and it divides the line in three equal parts. And we're actually cutting this shape into the wood. I'm then marking it with pencil so you can see it better. But I'm using blades to cut a fine line into the wood. And then that line will be like a wall that we can take a chisel and we can actually cut to that wall and get a very, very clean end shape. We've just put in the arc below that joins the bottom of the shape. And we're going to put in two arcs that are rising toward the corners. So this is a basic upper and lower bout shape that's universal to almost all the bowed strings. Um, and now we're going to chisel to that wall. We deepened the cut a little bit with a knife, and then we're going to chisel out to that wall and cut our shape. Now, if we were making an outline like this, we could then saw close to that and use a knife. Last, we're going to do a demo of the, the geometry of a full violin outline. I'm just going to show the actual lines as they're marked. I prepared this, uh, did all the proportion works, and laid out the, the, the points that guide this. So you're just seeing the actual marking of lines and arcs to complete the work. Uh, here we are doing the long arcs. And this is the center bout, the basic large circle that guides the center bout. And beginning in on the, some risers there, corner work. The corner works are particularly detailed. And in real work, they follow the actual sides that are created on the mold. And there we have the whole thing. Uh, and then we're going to line over it just a little bit to make it clearer to see. And we'll end with that. All right. Line and compass. That's how it works. Cremona Revival is actually aiming at recovering these old methods enough, completely enough, to allow makers today to once again do as they did to create new original instruments. Eventually, we'd like to see a community of makers working entirely within these recovered old ways.